Okay, this time we're going to talk about uh, basic RF attenuators. I was working on a project recently and I needed a, uh, a decent wideband RF attenuator and I didn't have one so I decided I'd put one together and uh, thought again this might be a, uh, an interesting topic. Uh, and I'm going to deal kind of primarily with uh, RF attenuators uh, in, and there's you know two basic forms called a pi attenuator and a T attenuator. I'll show you them both. Uh, and uh, you know, in most applications, in RF applications uh, in particular, the input and output impedance of uh, the attenuator is they usually match. And again, they're usually 50 ohms uh, in uh, in RF applications. That's what we're going to deal with here. And we'll call that term that characteristic impedance uh, Z0 or Z0 for those who are outside the U.S. Um, and uh, typically, when you talk about attenuators, their their value is usually expressed in either, you know, their loss, like uh, a 20 dB attenuator, or that's like kind of the power loss, or sometimes they're uh, also referred to by their voltage ratio, or like a 10x attenuator. You most often see that in like oscilloscope probes, are called 10x probes. But a 10x attenuator will attenuate the voltage by 10x. And of course, 10x and 20 dB are the same thing. A 10x change in voltage is a 20 dB change uh, in voltage, also a 20 dB change in power. And the relationship is uh, simply these equations. So uh, you know, the x value of dB is equal to 20 times the log of uh, V in over V out. And of course, you know, if we're talking about a loss, these would typically be inverted, and that would be a negative value. But when we talk about an attenuator, we say it's 20 dB, so we have it so that it comes out as a positive number here. So that's the same thing as saying 20 times the log of N, where N is equal to the volt voltage uh, ratio, V in to V out. Uh, also then equal to, you know, 10 times the log of P in divided by P out. Okay, so those are some of the voltage relationships going to dB, and then going the other way, if we want to calculate N from dB, it would simply be 10 raised to the power of the dB value divided by 20. Okay, so that's kind of the basic equations here. Uh, the basic structures for a pi and T attenuator are shown here, and you can kind of see why they're called a pi attenuator or a T attenuator. The T attenuator looks like the letter T, and the pi attenuator looks like the symbol pi. Okay, and in these cases where the input and output impedance is equal to, or the same, in this case equal to Z0, which uh, is 50 ohms. On the pi attenuator, it means that these two resistors, R1 and R2, will be the same. On the T attenuator, it means that these two resistors will be the same. And uh, the equations uh, for calculating out these things are, um, you know, R1 obviously equal to R2, and it's simply equal to the characteristic impedance multiplied by this ratio, the our value of n in this case would be 10, okay, so 10 plus 1 and 10 minus 1, so it would be 11 divided by 9 times 50 ohms, okay, would be, uh, for example, what we what I designed here, and then the series resistor is equal to this value, again, the characteristic impedance times this quantity n squared minus 1 over 2n, okay, so pretty simple equations to calculate out the values for the pi attenuator. Similarly, there's equal, you know, kind of similar equations for calculating out uh, the three values for the T attenuator. Okay. Now, the choice of which one to use is really kind of your preference. There's, uh, if you're just building this thing discreetly, there's really uh, no difference in performance or anything else between the two. It might be more convenient uh, in terms of which resistors you have on hand to design one or the other. If you were designing a thick film or thin film. Uh, uh, RF circuit, uh, then you might choose one or the other based on the resistor inks you've got available. So, um, so let's talk about uh, specifically what I put together here. Okay, In my example, I wanted a I wanted a 20 dB attenuator uh, as a 10x, and uh, I wanted to do a pi just simply because mechanically it worked out better for what I wanted to build. So there's our structure. We wanted a 20 dB or 10x uh, attenuator. So running through these calculations. Uh, I needed essentially 61 ohms going to ground on either side and a 247 ohm, 247 and a half ohm series resistor. Well, I didn't have these values uh, handy, okay? 
Uh, but so what I did is I just decided, well, I can kind of get close to those values uh, by using a couple of parallel combinations of resistors. And what I wound up building was this. Uh, basically coming in to a connector with two 120 ohm resistors that are in parallel to ground. And that's kind of nice because it splits up um, you know, the uh, inductance, if you will, of, uh, of both these resistors. So it uh, kind of help, helps make a good broadband uh, a resistor. So I do that on both sides. And then uh, to get close, that gets me very close to the 61 ohms. And then to get close to the 247 ohms, I just took two 510 ohm resistors in parallel. Okay, and that's kind of the closest thing I had, and and for my purposes, I didn't need exactly uh, you know, 20 dB. Just wanted something in that neighborhood, so this worked just fine. And uh, so, a couple of quick little uh, things I'll point out here: a couple of good uh, reference sites for RF circuits like this: um, you know, RFCafe.com, Microwaves101.com, and Radio-Electronics.com. Lots of uh, even calculators where if you wanted to design one of these attenuators, you could just put in the values and, uh, and it'll just you know, kind of calculate it for you. So let's kind of show you how I built this and we'll go test it real quick. So I'm going to see if I can get the camera here on the tripod. Hopefully it's not too noisy when I connect it up here. And uh, set the camera down here and uh, here's what I built. So uh, we look just at the back of it. You can kind of see I just put a little circuit diagram on it. Let's see if I can wait for that to focus in here for us here. Let's see, there we go. So there's the diagram of what we, uh, of what I built, and basically what I did is I just soldered on two SMA connectors, you know, kind of which would normally be board-bound SMA connectors onto a small piece of printed circuit board. Okay, and you can kind of see right in the middle there, uh, there's the there's the 510 ohm resistors. Okay, there's one. If I turn this around, there's the other one. Okay, so that's the two series 510 ohm resistors to make the 250 ohm series resistor. And then the uh, little shunt resistors to ground, they're kind of off to the side here. You can kind of see one on either side there from the center pin to ground. Those are the 220 ohm resistors on that side. And then there's the two kind of making a TP, if you will. Uh, the one right there and one right there from the center pin to shield or ground. So uh, I was hoping that this attenuator would give me uh, decent results up above uh, you know, one or two gigahertz or more and, uh, and it turns out that it really does so let's go throw it on the uh, analyzer and go take a look okay. so I'll bring the camera over here and kind of set us down in front of uh, the spectrum analyzer and uh, what we'll do is first uh, throw a um, just a little uh, SMA uh, bullet uh, between the two connectors here on the spectrum analyzer I have it set up with the tracking generator turned on here so let me get this thing threaded on here and we'll go take a look and normalize the response to this. So we can look carefully at the display. Let me just zoom in on the display here. Let's see. So we can kind of see I've got a, a line weighed up here at the top. And what I'll do is just normalize to that. So go to trace math, normalize, and do an instant normalize on that. So it's making a measurement of that now. And uh, created a nice uh, normalized line to that. So now what I can do is take this uh, bullet out of line okay, and I will take my uh, filter, or not my filter, my attenuator here and let's stick that in line here. So uh, if I connect this up here and, uh, can't really see what I'm doing here if I move the camera around and kind of see what I was doing here and uh, connecting up the other end here now to uh, my set of cables going into from the tracking generator through my attenuator and back out uh, to the spectrum analyzer. Now if we take a look at this display, okay, we can see that I've got a really clean you know, line here. T two divisions down, I'm at 10 dB per division, so 2 dB down. And this is going from 1 megahertz out to 2.5 gigahertz. So I think this little um, you know, experiment here in terms of building a, a wideband uh, 20 dB attenuator uh, worked out really well and it was just a couple of jump box parts. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, go build yourself some attenuators if you need them. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.